So Guff rewrites the ending just as both of them are. Oh, 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 no. <laughs> of course. Of course, of course, of course. Just, just change it. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm, I give up. I do love card games, and while I've dipped my toes into playing some Shadowverse, as well as a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh, I've never actually learned how to play Magic the Gathering. I know for a fact that a few of my friends and some of our subscribers here play Magic the Gathering, but I don't know if I'd be into it. What I am very interested in, though, is learning the lore of new fictional universes. So if you haven't already, go down in the description, go and support the original video, and without further ado, let's see what this is about. This video is brought to you by my patrons and CoolStuffInc.com. A list of topics and content warnings can be found in the description. My name is Spice Arak, aka Soy Celiaco, and this is the entire story of Magic the Gathering. Let's go! In Very the good intro. There was this oh, chunky course. dragon who birthed all the other dragons on Dominaria, two of which were Nicole Bolas and Ugin. The others are cool but died and don't matter. Dominaria is a plane of existence in Magic the Gathering, separated from the rest by the Blind Eternities. If you're having trouble imagining it, think of planes as planets, the Blind Eternities as space, and me as the caring parental figure you always knew you deserved. Around the same time on Ravnica, another plane, another dragon, a sphinx, and some other freaks signed the Guild Pact, splitting the plane into nine guilds and promoting peace and cooperative development between each other. For I now, see. back to Dominaria and societies have developed, one of which is the Thran, and a handsome man turns up to help them out. Just kidding, it's Yorgmoth, who is a magic fascist. He is handsome though, that part was true. He meets Daifed, who is a planeswalker, a special near god with the ability to transport between the different planes, and she takes him to uh -huh. an empty plane where he can house the people who are sick with a mysterious and contagious disease caused by the magic nuclear reactors that the Thran use. Just kidding, he stores them there to experiment on them oh and reform them into cyber flesh nightmare bastards, oh including my this guy God, what is Gips, that? whilst also exiling his political rivals and their goblin servants to a different plane called Mercadia. The Thran aren't jazzed by all of this and they start a civil war, so so Yorgmoth blows up an artificial moon and kills them all, but gets trapped inside his hell plane by a What is going on? <laughs> I'm sorry I haven't commentated much on anything, but like I'm just trying to keep up with this. This is going super fast, man. But I think I'm still following this. Planes, different guilds, different interests, banishing people creating flesh golems. But I've always enjoyed the aspect of like telling stories through your card art. I don't think Shadowverse does this, but I'm uh, pretty sure Yu-Gi-Oh does. A Thran lady who fuses together a special key that keeps the gate between the two planes shut and then dies because of the moon. Everybody's dead, Dave. Oh, and the plane that Yorgmoth is trapped on is called Phyrexia. That's probably not going to be important later on. Time passes okay. and some more bullshit happens. It. On Dominaria, a guy called Dakon forges a special sword called the Black Blade, and Nicol Bolas has a punch up with a big squid which opens the first of Dominaria's many time rifts over Madara. On Innistrad, course, a new England horror it? plane, a chap called Edgar Markov begins the curse Holy of vampirism with his vampire. grandson Sorin. Sorin, Ugin, and a very emotionally healthy core called Nahiri seal some plane eating monsters, the three Eldrazi Titans, in a mountain on Zendikar, a mana rich plane of adventure huh? and Nahiri's homeworld. They do this to stop them from eating the whole multiverse and use a spell that can only be broken by three planeswalkers assembling at the Eye of Ugin in the mountain and using Ugin's ghost flame. Foolproof. And back on Dominaria, okay. two boys called Mishra and Urza are born. Oh no. The boys grow up to be... I... I suspect that this is the beginning of the end, essentially. <laughs> I don't know who those two are, so. With this kind of setup, with different planes having different aspects about them, I, I guess it, it's good because it allows artists to kind of create whatever they want within a, a particular plane, so it, it fits within the lore still, but it's also just a cool new card with a very different style. So I see the logic behind it. The fact that this can all somehow tie it together, though, is... Uh, is quite amazing. Skilled artificers, but when a brotherly feud leads to the death of their mentor, they become indefinite rivals. Huh, that rock they were fighting over who's breaking in two caused their mentor's death sure does look very similar to that special key that sealed Phyrexia away from Dominaria. Oh. It's probably nothing that- Yo, who the fuck 
fuck are you? The Brothers feud <laughs> develops into a full-blown world war, and Mishra is corrupted and changed by Phyrexia. Urza isn't a fan of either this or the prescient Phyrexian invasion, and blows up a third yeah, of the plane with a Megaton fruit bowl called the Golgothian Silex. He becomes a planeswalker for his troubles, and his eyes are replaced with the two halves of the Power Stone that he and his brother nearly destroyed the world oh, over. Okay, How yeah, sentimental, yeah. I guess. Of Time course. passes, and Urza's gap century backpacking around the multiverse ends when he meets Xantia, a newt or human turned Phyrexian, and decides it's probably time for him to deal with the hell world that ate his brother. His assault fails, he goes mad, and runs away through space with Xantia, being chased by Phyrexians to every world he passes through, some of which are destroyed as a result, and others asking him politely but firmly to leave. Urza goes- uh, I mean, if destruction follows him, you might not want him on your plane. It's back to Dominaria eventually, where Gix is waiting to meet him, and the pair fight, with Xantia sacrificing herself to save Urza and finally destroy Gix. More time passes. On the plane of Kamigawa, a Japanese folklore and later futurist star world, the mortal gotcha. emperor seals the daughter there of the Kami Emperor in a decorative plate to achieve immortality, and that just causes a whole hullabaloo. The daughters of both emperors eventually join forces to defeat their warring parents with the help of a rogue called Toshiro Umazawa, whose actions ended up diminishing the extra planar powers of whatever the piss this thing is, so he's blinded and sent to the plane of Dominaria in exile. Azor, the Sphinx from Ravnica who set up the Azorius Guild, is a planeswalker, and he and Ugin try and trap Nicol Bolas with a magic disc called the Immortal Sun on Ixalan, an Aztec with Dinosaur's Island on a plane of the same name. <laughs> of course there is. But they is. mess up, and Azor ends up getting stuck there instead. Why did they mess up? Well, Why? as Sarkin yeah. sees when he travels back in time on Tarkir, Ugin gets killed by Nicol Bolas in a crux of- what? How did you see that guy? He's just a little guy in the corner of the art. Are you kidding me? Of fate, but he saves the dying dragon and seals him in a healing cocoon. Who is Sarkin? What is Tarkir? I'm confused. What on earth is going on? You'll find out in a few thousand years. Let's check okay. back in with Dominaria, and oh dear, it's in one of I these three wait. ice ages that will sporadically befall it because of Urza's Silex Blast. A bloke called Joda and a lady called Jaya Ballard are born and fight a necromancer called Limdor and a nightwalker called Lushrak. But both of those weirdos piss off on their own, and Jaya's spark ignites when a weird little magic freak trapped in a ring makes her lose her mind for a wee moment. Fast forward a few okay. years, nothing happened. Nothing happened, don't oh. worry about it. And Urza's back. <laughs> oh no, again. He's healed his mind, but not his soul, because he founds a school on the island of Teleria on Dominaria, where he's about to do a whole bunch of unethical stuff to everybody who steps foot inside. Amongst those are the wizards Baron and Rain, and the students Urtai and- Oh, pissing shit! Oh. The Phyrexians just snuck up and invaded the Telerian Academy- Well, anywhere this guy goes, they're just gonna follow him. Follow him to the ends of the Earth. Follow him to several different planes. Ends of their planes. ...killing everybody inside. Quick, Urza, send the silver golem you just made called Khan, who's been brought to life with the heartstone that you took from Xantia's corpse, you fucking weirdo, back in oh, time 24 my God. hours to prevent them from doing that. Oh, shitting piss! Urza's time machine was built by a madman with no moral compass, and of course, it exploded the minute somebody turned it on. Only a handful of, of people escape the invading Phyrexians, along with a bunch of students who get trapped in different time bubbles, like the children, Aww. Joyra and Teferi, the former of whom is left immortal because of the time explosion, the latter of whom develops a fascination with time after being trapped in a slow time bubble whilst on fire for 20 years. Oh no. Poor guy. I guess it is what it is, man. It happens. Urza then decides that he alone can solve the problem that he first caused and has only made worse up until this point by beginning <laughs> yeah, the construction yeah, of sure. the legacy weapon to once and all destroy Phyrexia and the, Jesus Christ, the Bloodlines Project. More on that later. He starts gathering bits and bobs together to build the legacy, including destroying Serra's Realm, an angelic world of peace and harmony that was one of the now corrupted planes that he unwittingly led Phyrexians to. <sighs> This man. Like, at this point, he, I'm pretty sure he's done way more harm than good. <laughs> Hopefully, Urza apologized at least a few times for all of the trouble as he shrinks all of the energy of the plane down into a battery to power his big gun and erases it from existence. 
God, Urza sucks so bad. Yeah, we right? We temporarily zip off to the feudal plain of Algrotha to see some dwarves, vampires, and a Marge Simpson creepypasta duke it out over a magical wind chime. But none of it has any bearing on the main narrative. Speaking of the main okay. narrative, however, Joyra and Teferi move to a land called Zalfia on Dominaria. Tetsuo Umazawa, a distant descendant of Toshiro, slays Nicol Bolas. Gotcha. Holy shit, what a chad. The elder dragons on the plain of Archivus end up period of violence so tremendous that it's known as the Blood Age and established the School of Strixhaven to study and preserve magical knowledge. And Nahiri is awoken from her meditative watch on Zendikar as the Eldrazi test the bounds of their prison. She fights off their broods and recontains them, wondering where Sorin and Ugin are. She finds Sorin on Innistrad, threatening him that if he doesn't get oh, his yeah, alabaster ass gotcha. to Zendikar to fix things up lickety split, I swear to God, and then Sorin seals her in a magical moon shard prison oh. called the Hell Vault with the help well, of an archangel again. he created called Avacyn and leaves her there for thousands of Avacyn years. Hard, though. You know, for an ageless vampire and a planeswalker, Sovereign Shaw is short in both temper and sight. We yet again return to Dominaria, where Teferi's new home, itself a place of great magical learning, phases out of existence because of Teferi's time magic meddling, during which the man spark ignites, and a bunch of powerful mages all convene to work out what exactly happened. The obviously villain-coded one turns out to be a big-time <laughs> villain who wants all the knowledge and power for himself, and the Mirage War breaks out. 200 years later, Teferi turns up and is like, good lord, what happened here? And defeats the bad guy, who then gets trapped in the Amber Prison by the good guy that the bad guy had previously trapped in the Amber Prison during the war. They're also assisted by a lady called Sisse, who's traveling on a flying oh, ship God. called the Weatherlight. But uh, wait, wait, the who traveling on the what? Sisse was born to a Zalfiran family, now slain by Phyrexians, who was given the Skyship Weatherlight by Urza for safekeeping after he grew it from the weather seed that he was given by an angry tree after he convinced him that destroying an entire continent with a magical hydrogen bomb was totally fine and cool, actually. What is going on? <laughs> I think. I think doing this video might have been a mistake. <laughs> I am so overly stimulated right now, it's like I'm watching a Maxor video. Give me a second while my brain tries to catch up. Sisei's on a quest to gather together all the legacy artifacts, a series of items that, when combined together, will form the legacy weapon. Because loads of them have been stolen. Stolen from where and by whom, you ask? Uh, yeah. Well, stolen from where and by whom? Came in there a little bit late, Rowan. Come on. Chop, chop, trying to record here. They'd been given to the parents of Gerard Capuchin, who'd passed them down to him when they had also been targeted and slain by Phyrexians. Of course, the Phyrexians Gerard himself was everywhere. rescued from the Phyrexians by Khan, who Urza had oh. also gifted to the Capuchin family, because Urza is a scumbag who values his right of ownership over the sentience of the things he <sighs> owns, and then was adopted by a Jamuran warlord called Siddhar Kondo. The syntax of that sentence sounds like Urza was adopted. No, it was Gerard. Urza deserves no family. <laughs> Siddhar immediately took a liking to Gerard over his biological son, Vuel, who grows to resent Yikes. Gerard so much that he attacks his father's camp, stealing all of the legacy artifacts, including Khan, who he tricks and into killing an innocent goes. child, thus converting the silver golem to a lifetime of pacifism, and flees to a plane called Wrath through a portal. Sisse hires Gerard onto the Weatherlight, along with a bunch of other people, including the total normal human Krovax, Miri the Cat totally. Warrior, the Navigator Hannah, the Telerian Graduate Urtai, and the Goblin Squee. And then they all set off to, wait, wait a minute, where did Sisse go? Whilst we were distracted doing introductions, she got kidnapped, of course, by someone called oh, no. Volraf, and now the whole crew need to fly to Raf to get her back. Luckily, the Weatherlight can plane shift. It's like the TARDIS, but a boat and can't do the time thing. Oh, also, the nice elf that was on the crew? Yeah, he gets killed by some German children's book illustrations. Whoa. Now on Wrath, an occupied world of weird yeah, adaptive those are horrific. Rock, Gerard leads the native elves in a revolt against Volrath. Krovax's guardian angel gets corrupted and he has to kill her and then becomes a vampire because of a family curse and then turns evil and falls off the weatherlight. Khan okay. is rescued along with some other legacy artifacts, but not before being psychologically tortured by being thrown into a funhouse rotating room with a bunch of weak goblins who his massive silver body crushes to death. 
Turns out that Volrath is the Phyrexianized Vuel. His own magic skyboat damages the Weatherlight's plane shifting matrix, so they have to escape through a portal that Urtai has been keeping open. Although, when they do leave, they're being chased by Volrath's ship, so they didn't manage to pick him up on the way, and he stays trapped on Wrath as the portal Damn. closes. Where do they end up? Why, Mercadia, of course. It's been a while since we've seen them, and wouldn't you know it, all of the Thran that Yorgmoth exiled here have developed a society where the descendants of their goblin servants are now the dominant social ethnic group. What? Remember, kids, when education is not liberating, the dream of the oppressed is to become the oppressor. The Weatherlight crew find the rest of the legacy artifacts here, <sighs> a bunch of gems that had mighty morphing power injured themselves into a robot god dragon. They defeat the Phyrexians chasing yeah, them, including Balrath, and Hannah and Gerard fall in love. Then they all return well, home, yeah. just in time Kinda to stop the Phyrexian too. invasion. Oh wait, it's already started, oh dearie me. It's invasion oh. time, and Urza's been busy with his many projects. He's what? Okay, Urza, are you gonna screw things up again? Bred a race of super soldiers from Thran DNA called the Metathran to act as his personal army, because the only way to defeat one godlike eugenicist is with another, slightly different godlike eugenicist. He also assembles a group of planeswalkers called the Nine Titans to take the fight to the heart of Phyrexia itself as Dominaria is invaded. There would have been ten Titans, but when Urza asked a fairy to join in, the Time Mage said, Work with you? Are you kidding me? Every <laughs> catastrophe on this plane and in my life can be traced back to you. Sort your own problems out. I'm. The fairy is big brain. He's like, Yeah, no, I ain't getting involved with you anymore. Out of here and phases out of existence, taking the nations of Zalfir and Shiv with him. Meanwhile, him. Hannah and Jared's relationship is going great until Hannah catches a Phyrexian plague and dies. Her dad, oh. the wizard Baron, who used to work at the Telerian <laughs> College, is distraught, and Urza's like, Man, I'm sorry I manipulated you into falling in love and having a child with your co-worker Rain just so I could breed people with strong connections to White Manor to one day become part of the legacy weapon itself by sacrificing their life for it. That's also the reason what? that Jared and Sissé were born as well. It was all part of Operation what? Bloodline, you see. I've been clandestinely oh! selectively born breeding human beings and pulling the strings to make sure they all end up together, so I guess it's a little bit of my fault that all of this went down. Urza just might be the worst existence in all of Magic the Gathering. <laughs> Sorry, that was probably a bad time to drop that some of your most beautiful life events were all instigated by me so that I could out eugenics or wizard you Nazi. Think? Uh, you gonna be okay, champ? Baron blows up the entire oh of the Telerian God. continent with him still on it, unfortunately not killing Urza, and the Dominarians manage to push back the Phyrexians and destroy their invasion portals. Congratulations, folks, we've defeated the Phyrexians once and for all. Hey, Somebody what's that shimmering Urza? landscape seemingly coming into existence across every continent on Dominaria? Well, that's the Wrathy Overlay that Yorgmoth is using to teleport the entire Phyrexian army and the Plane of Wrath itself straight onto Dominaria and occupy the entire Yikes. world at once. Bugger. Squee gets yeah, captured by Yorgmoth and given over. to Krovax, who's taken Volrath's place as the Evancar of Wrath, and also to the newly corrupted Urtai as a plaything. They give him the gift of immortality, just so that they can kill him forever. The Nine Titans decide that now is the time to invade Phyrexia and cut the invasion off at the source, but then just a whole lot of betraying happens. Tevish of course. Zach, the most obviously evil of all the Nine Titans, kills Daria and Christina of the Woods because he was secretly working for Phyrexia. But then Urza <laughs> reveals that he knew card. Tevish would betray him, and so betrays Tevish what? and stuffs him in a contraption that'll act as a spirit bomb to destroy Phyrexia. If you knew he was gonna betray you, then why didn't you cage him before he betrayed anybody and killed people? What? He could have, of course, done this at any time, meaning that Daria and Christina absolutely died for nothing. There! There, I said! <laughs> what? But then Urza, upon being in Phyrexia and not getting his ass beat, is like, huh, this whole place is actually kind of impressive when you think about it, and dismantles the contraption so as to preserve Phyrexia. So you <gasps> die for even less than nothing, you two. Then Gerard turns up and cuts Urza's head off for being a fucking rube, Thank and also goodness. because he betrayed Dominaria because Yorgmoth promised him that if he killed Urza, he'd resurrect Hannah. But then Gerard what? betrays Yorgmoth and escapes from Phyrexia with Urza's head, whose eyes, being two halves of the Power Stone that he and Mishra found all those years ago, are the final pieces of the 
legacy weapon. Oh, and Squee kind of betrays his role as an infinite murder toy by killing Krovax whilst he's distracted with all of these other betrayals going on. Some of the remaining Titans who are still on Phyrexia blow up their own soul bombs, almost totally destroying the plane, and Yorgmoth says, if you want a job done properly, you gotta do it yourself, and invades Dominaria as a death cloud which ends up killing all life on the plane of before course. the legacy weapon gets activated. And that's it. That's how the story ends. Jared, Urza, even Squee, all dead, with Phyrexia winning an ultimate, but Pyrrhic victory. Damn. At which point Commodore Goth won no! the last one. No! Are you? I was so bamboozled by just like the delivery and my brain running on overdrive this entire time to keep up with the lore <laughs> that I didn't even realize that we're just nowhere near the end of this video. I can't believe Urza's entire story here. What is wrong with that man? Then at the end of it all, it just is for nothing. Unless if it's not, and we somehow restart this, maybe somebody brings Urza back to life. I swear to God, if they do that, I'm gonna flip. Maining Titans looks up from the book where all of this is written down and goes, that was a tad dreary, wasn't it? And Bolivar, what? another remaining Titan, is like, wait, you knew that was gonna happen? Change it, you stupid ass. So Guff rewrites the ending just as both of them are- Oh, oh, oh no! <laughs> of course. Of course, of course, of course. Just, just change it. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm, I give up. Consumed by the Death Cloud and literally retcons the whole narrative so that Jared managed to sacrifice himself just in time to destroy Yorgmoth because Commodore Guff has the power of meta storytelling? No, this isn't a pithy gag, that's literally his planeswalker power. And I'll Meta story? Then you're just the most powerful being, just write a good story! But of course you're crazy and you're not gonna do that. But all of this can't ascend to being a planeswalker. Trust me, okay. there are worse ways to end a multi-year build-up to a Phyrexian invasion. But now we're in a I period see. of peace and rebuilding as Dominaria takes a breather and... A magical device called the Mirari is discovered, Never which mind. is said to grant great power and wishes, and the entire continent of Otaria, which means loser in Portuguese by the way, goes to war with each other over it. A lady with an unlit planeswalker spark called Jessica is born as a pit fighter and killed by her brother who's driven mad by the Mirari. She's brought back by the Cabal, a totally legitimate business enterprise, as phage, <laughs> like King Midas, but with death rather than gold. She goes to war with the Cabal's rival, a guy called Ixidor, and an angel he created, but then gets killed again by her brother. Why do people just create because angels? he's been working on himself and is sorry about what his Mirari madness has now. caused. So he stabs her with the Mirari sword that he'd previously given up and then reclaimed when he realized that leaving it in the woods was having some annihilation style effects on the local oh. flora and fauna. Yeah, it's, it's but not then, good. because of some 20,000 year old prophecy bollocks and the power of the Mirari now stuck in her chest, Jessica slash Phage comes back as Corona, spelt with a K, oh, YouTube. A very manifestation of all of Dominaria's manner. But because of her planeswalker spark, she's also able to explore the multiverse. But because of the Marari, she's also kind of mad. Her existence ah. and habit of leaving the plane starts to drain Dominaria of all of its mana. So Khan manages to take her to an artifact plane called Argentum and takes the Marari out of her to destroy this version of her form, rebirthing okay. her for a third and final time as Jessica, again, and finally Rice igniting reborn. her planeswalker spark. Speaking of the birth of planeswalkers, a girl called Liliana is born around here to a wealthy Dominarian family, but her brother falls sick with leftover Phyrexianitis. She meets oh. a nice man with bird motifs in the woods, and he it's tells totally her to nice. use a special herb to preserve her brother's life. This Wait. works exactly as one could have expected, immediately turning her brother into a zombie, and the trauma of that ignites her spark. Don't trust men with ravens. That's like one of the first three rules you learn about in forest navigation. But now we take a what? big break from Dominarian. I'm not gonna go back to that, but I saw that. Oh, yeah. Khan's on Argentum and transforms the Mirari into a metal man called Memnarch, both to watch over the plane and to keep the okay. Mirari from falling into a villain's hands, but a single drop of Phyrexian oil leaks out of his butthole because Phyrexian he's still powered by Xanthus' Phyrexian heart, and it begins to oh. corrupt the plane and its new custodian. Over several oh. decades, the oil both drives Memnarch mad and lets him grow meat on his Just metal body, gross. He renames oil? the plane to Mirrodin, kills all the native Urgolems, and starts kidnapping creatures from other planes to breed a planeswalker spark. He oh, finally succeeds no. with Glissa Sunstalker. Is it Sunstalker? Hang on. Thank goodness. Sunseeker. 
Oh. Yeah, seeking is the less creepy version of stalking. He succeeds gotcha. when Glissa Sunseeker is born, but she organizes with a group of other Mirrens to stop Memnarch's plans. But in a final confrontation, both the elf and the wizard are slain just as Memnarch's machine activates and wipes out all life on Mirrodin, except for that of the goblin Slowbad, who the machine accidentally implants with Planeswalker powers rather than Memnarch. Khan shows up, the barriers blocking him from the plane now gone, and offers to guide Slowbad throughout the multiverse. But the goblin decides instead to give up his spark to undo the death wave, resurrect Glissa, and return all but the non-natively born creatures of Mirrodin that to their own worlds. Goblin I mean, Jesus is then fittingly yeah. murdered for our sins by a clan of very confused and angry goblins, and the Marari was given to Glissa for safekeeping. She must have hid it very well, because even the writers oh of Magic Story God. have forgotten it existed for the past 20 years. You can't have anything nice happen. Hey, do you like cool stuff? Then why don't you do. ink a check to coolstuffinc.com? <laughs> oh, I don't think I've... they accept checks. Cool Stuff Inc. <laughs> sells all the magic cards you've heard about in this Adley. video. From Slowbad to Nicol Bolas to oh, everybody's man. favorite character, Niall Sylvain. The story is Each so far time you look away from him, he gets a little bit closer. Yeah, I can't you can buy singles, speak right. sealed product, even D&D accoutrement from them. So much. Did you know that One Piece has a card game? Get your copies of Charlotte Aww. Cracker yeah, from CoolStuffInc.com. Now only seen any of the cards, though. It's like you're losing money by not buying it. If this video has inspired you to make the mistake of getting into Magic the Gathering, then I'm here to lessen the financial toll of that awful decision with my promo code. Use spice <laughs> at the checkout to get 5% off Spices. of any order. Why, with that Amazing. code, for every 20 Charlotte crackers you order, you'll get one free. How could such a generous <laughs> business model survive? Thank you to Cool Stuff Inc. for sponsoring <laughs> this video and for making it so easy to build Magic the Gathering decks. Get your game on today by using spice at checkout. The style of this ad read was lovingly ripped off from the much better YouTuber Noodle. I like his work a lot, and I hope this is taken I as see. the flattery I intend it to be, and not as intellectual theft. Anyway, <laughs> back to the video! Smash cut to Ravnica, where everything is fine. Just kidding, a civil Never war was about mind. to break out because of some Duh. proper film noir bollocks. A secret 10th mm -hmm. guild, the Demir, led by Zadek, a vampire, is planning ah, on taking over the city I've walls for this guy's profile. But they're stopped, the and Zadek is arrested just in the nick of time by Agris Kos, a down-on-his-luck boss cop from a failed marriage with a drinking problem who's just one day away from retirement. Hey, <laughs> I'm a storytelling trope over here! Hooray, the city is saved. But Zadek getting arrested was actually all part of the plan. Because the Demir's purpose as secretly written in the Guild Pact was to oppose the Guild Pact, Zadek's machinations were well within his guild's duties, and so his arrest breaches the magical contract which protects guilds in their assigned roles and destroys the Guild Pact entirely, which was oh, Zadek's no. plan all along. But then the leader of the Azorius assassinates Zadek in prison to use his oh. ghost as a weapon to seize power for himself. Oh. But then oh. Koz, who's a ghost, now because of a dragon related oh. incident in which he saved the city for a second time, traps oh. Zadek's soul himself and unleashes that on Augustine, saving Ravnica oh. for a third time. A new non-magical oh. guild pact is drafted by Tasa Karlov to bring about an end to all of these contrivances and a very tenuous piece is reformed on Ravnica. Oh. Never mind. Wait, what was that sound? Oh, it's the mending. Okay, so you remember what? all the space-time disasters yes. that were going yes, on in Dominaria throughout its history? Well, turns out they've taken quite a toll on the entire multiverse and now they need to be fixed or everyone everywhere all at once will unravel and cease to be. Teferi, Jessica, Lord Wingrace, Fraley's, and some new kids on the block, Rada and Vensa, come together to close the time rifts. Both gotcha. Catman and Poison Ivy die closing theirs, Teferi gives oh. up a spark to close yeah. his, returning Shiv to Dominaria but being unable to return Zalfir. Jessica gets manipulated by Le Shrak, who returns to the story just long enough to get killed Le by Shrek. a resurrected Nicole Bolas, who came back because of the rift that he opened whilst fighting that Leviathan a thousand years ago. Nicole Bolas mm. uses Le Shrak's life to close that rift, then Jessica dies herself, closing the rift that had been caused by her rebirth as Corona. Rest in peace, baby okay. doll. 
Khan closes the final rift by going back in time to the Isle of Teleria before Baron blew it up and sacrificing his spark. He's flung back to the present and immediately feels the corrupting Phyrexian oil in his heart, which had up until this point been kept dormant due to his spark, beginning to overtake him. He uses the last of his planeswalker magic to flee to the heart of Mirrodin and contain himself there, leaving a message that none should follow. This final rift ceiling not only saves the multiverse, Honorable. but significantly depowers all planeswalkers. Rather than being near gods, they now must contend with only being hyper powerful mages and warriors. They're also on cards now, which 20 something years later, everyone agrees was a great narrative move and kind of a mechanical mistake. At the same time as all of this, Kamigawa completes its digital revolution. Very cool. Huh? Nicole Bolas turns. Oh, I think Kamigawa was the, the Japanese type plane. Uh, he had mentioned earlier that they were going to go like futuristic later on. Turns up on Amonkhet and genocides the plane of everyone over the age of five and begins his cruel plans to reascend oh. to become a pre-mending god. Whack. Okay. Liliana is guided by Nicol Bolas to four demons to sign her soul away in exchange for some cool full body contractual tattoos and also eternal youth and lots of power. Cool beans. Concerning. And an elf called Nissa <laughs> is born. Ooh. On Ooh. Zendikar, the young Nyssa feels a connection to the world which is roiling with pain because of those three skyscraper-sized eldritch splinters uh, trapped in one of its mountain ranges. Yeah. Nyssa goes to investigate what's hurting her world and is mind-blasted into planeswalking Ooh. to a world called Lorwyn. Star wipe to Lorwyn and holy macaroni, what a delightful Celtic-inspired world of an eternal summer's afternoon that a really cool person who's also good at sex made a totally not bloated video essay about. Everything's pretty <laughs> good on Lorwyn, except for the elf Nazis, who Nyssa meets hunting down the plains native uh, goblins for quite literally the crime of being ugly. As it turns oh, out, however, the plane has an inverted side guys. that overtakes the world every 300 years. Nyssa sees this happening and skedaddles before she's caught in the world-altering aurora, which transforms transforms Lorwyn into Shadowmoor, where everybody oh. but the elves are Nazis. Is that worse? I guess. Una, the queen of the Fae on Lorwyn, knew the shift was coming <sighs> and made a copy of herself that would retain her memories when the Aurora came so that she could remain in control of the world. The copy, an elf called Marilyn, was like, actually, I'ma fuck off on my own for a bit. And when the Aurora hit, ended up defeating Una and restoring the oh. day-night cycle of Lorwyn <laughs> and Shadowmoor rather than it being a thrice-centennial event. Why not celebrate Rip. this victory with another baby? Tezzeret is born on Esper, a cruel artificial realm where people are partially made of metal, with the upper class's bodies being supplemented with precious ethereum, and metal Ooh. must always be recycled. He ferociously pushes to train himself and ascend the class structure, but when he's rebuffed one too many times, he tries to steal the filigree texts. Essentially, this world's equivalent of the Quran, Encyclopedia Britannica, and the way things work all rolled into one. But he finds the author pulled a Kung Fu Panda Dragon Scroll, and every page is blank and the guards try and Bruh. kill him as his planeswalker spark ignites and he meets Nicol Bolas who promises him power in exchange for service. Ow, my brain! Was that an overload of fun lore knowledge? No, that was Jace Beleren being born on a Tales from the Loop looking war world as a dirt poor but hyper powerful mind mage who gets trained in the art of mind thievery by the Sphinx Alahamrat. Turns out, however, that Old Al is manipulating Jace into carrying out espionage for both sides of a civil war and profiteering oh. of it. So Jace makes him oh. forget how to breathe, which is the sickest way a uh, mind mage could ever kill someone. That is pretty sick. Very creative way of using that kind of magic too. Well, given the, the context of I don't know exactly how that works, but... And Al Hammerit wipes the boy's mind with his last act, which causes Jace's planeswalker spark to activate, and he finds himself on Ravnica with no knowledge of who he is. He ends up <laughs> he working for a EDM. multiversal requisitions organization called the Infinite Consortium, ran by the most inconsistently drawn character in Magic the Gathering's entire history. What does the <laughs> Infinite Consortium do? Well, its boss Tezzeret made a deal with the Phyrexian forces growing in the heart of Mirrodin and developed a device on Kamigawa, which he then tried to use to control the spirit dragon Kyodai to enable Ooh. travel between realms for non-planeswalker Phyrexians. Saw but his much plan earlier fails in and instead ignites the Emperor of Kamigawa's planeswalker spark, oh. rendering both it and her memory unstable, and she disappears from the plane. Then her childhood friend Kato gets an origami robot Tanuki with a spirit inside it that ignites his spark, and he goes looking for her. So uh, yeah, they do stuff like that. But Jace uh, isn't okay. the only baby among us. Chandra Nalav, daughter of the inventor renegades Pierre and Kieran, is born and becomes a pyromancer, which is both rare and illegal on her cogpunk India-inspired homeworld of Kaladesh. And so Dude, 
the variety of all of these planes is insane. And the artwork looks so incredibly cool. It's just so interesting. This freaking elephant is <laughs> very beautiful. I don't know what else to say. Soon, a pig called Burrell tracks her family down, kills her dad, and then Chandra explodes him and planeswalks to Ragatha to train in the Pyromancer ways. I guess blue lives don't matter after all. Zing! A planeswalker called Vivian Reed is also born around this time on Scala, a plane that will one day be destroyed by Nicol Bolas for some reason. Of she course. is entrusted with the Arcbow, both a magical database for all of her home plane's native fauna, but also a powerful weapon designed oh. explicitly to be a weapon to destroy Nicol weapon. Bolas. Elspeth, oh, nice. another planeswalker, is also born around here. Gee, it's like someone was putting chemicals in the water to turn the freaking baby's magic. It's not entirely <laughs> clear where she was born, as her mother says that the plane of Capenna welcomed them, and Elspeth herself prays to Sarah of Sarah's realm fame, potentially meaning that they're refugees from one of the realms that the angel planeswalker visited. Either way, she has a pretty normal childhood, being kept in a Phyrexian prison for most of her life. Yes, the Phyrexians yeah, are on Capenna as well. Her spark igniting the moment before she suffers death via vivisection, arriving on the ancient Greek inspired plane of Theros, finding a sword that falls out of the stars, panicking, and planes walking away yet again to Bant, a literal evangelical crusader plane that only gets a pass because rhino monks oh. and lion knights are dope to look at. They Kithian are. is our last magic infant born around this time and is naturally indestructible. He runs with a crew of trouble quelling kids in the Therosian city of Akros and gets arrested. Growing up in a prison, he learns how to use lore magic, but instead of becoming a narc, he lore ends magic? up returning to a life of community defense, getting noticed by the god of the sun Heliod and given a magic spear. Heliod, he uses Heliod's magic Helios. to slay a zombie giant like the god asked of him, but when he tries to use it to kill Erebos, the god of the dead himself, the magic backfires, killing all of his friends, leaving him traumatized, igniting his spark, and planeswalking to Bant. Uh, the first person he meets can't pronounce Grecian-style names, calling him Gideon, and the kid just kind of runs with it for the rest of his life. Let's check in with Tezzeret. <laughs> oh no, he's gone home only to be usurped from running his consortium by Jace, and they fight, with Jace blowing up Mr. Meccano's brain as well as Rip. cutting off his liquid metal arm. Nicol Bolas then turns up and quietly collects his one-time rival's body, Tezzeret having originally usurped the consortium from the dragon. Nicol Bolas revives him, gives him a new arm, and then brands him with a forehead tattoo to forever remind him of where his loyalty now lies. Jesus. But Jace wasn't alone. Liliana has been manipulating him, both strategically and romantically, into staging the coup. She's on her own quest to rid herself of her demon contract whilst retaining all the power it gave her, and finds a gaudy face accessory in some ogre's tomb. She uses the Chain Veil's dark magic to destroy one of the four signatory demons who own her mm. soul, and also to curse another planeswalker called Garrick when the two get into a fight. Where Garrick fails to junt her out, and she escapes in? as the curse begins to corrupt him. The Wait, veil curse, what the piss in Laura does Junta out mean? Could it possibly be referring to the Shard of Jund? Part of the fractured plane called Alara where Bant, Esper, Grixis, and Naya were all once one? Gee, I wonder what would happen if they all converged Ooh. together again? That's the question on Nicol Bolas's weird lips. You see, the plane <laughs> was once unified, but an unknown planeswalker plundered the plane for mana and shattered it into five. Now Bolas seeks to reunify the shards and siphon the immense power that would generate to roid up his planeswalker spark again. He starts manipulating the magic and people of all the five shards into bringing about the conflux, but is ultimately stopped from succeeding by Ajani, a Leonin planeswalker and disaster magnet who uses soul magic to conjure an effigy of Bolas's soul and uses it to banish the dragon from the newly unified plane, and all is well. There's so many different types of magics here. But also, I'm gonna guess that with all these kind of different colored, maybe elemental like planes, because I know that there's different types of mana as well that you need or resources in order to summon particular units. I think that's how magic works. Maybe all of those like mana or oh, is it mana? Uh, all, all of the resources that you need to summon the units are kind of based on these different planes. Just kidding. Turns out the Crusader Kingdom doesn't like Zombie World, which doesn't care for Magic Amazon, who dislikes Reddit's idea of Utopia, which wants to destroy Jurassic Park, which wants to eat modded CK3, and now the whole world's at war. Let's get out uh, of here course. and head to Zendikar. We're back, baby! Chandra arrives after having stolen a magical text called the Dragon Scroll. Sarkhan's also here, an exiled Mardu clansman from the hyper-orientalist plane of Tarkir, who 
loves dragons so much he will one day cause genocides just to hang out with them at home. <laughs> he saw Bolas on Alara and because he's at a level of horny for dragons that ought to be illegal, willingly becomes his pawn and is hanging out guarding something called the Eye of Ugin. <laughs> whatever Ooh. that is. Chand yeah, whatever that is. Totally not important. I do remember though. Sandra turns up because something about the spell she's trying to crack mentioned the Eye of Ugin and Sarkin attacks her but is thwarted by Jace who turns up because the oh, consortium was hired Jace. to retrieve the scroll from Chandra. Chandra uses the magic of the scroll to defeat Sarkin and it turns out that that magic is Ugin's ghost fire. Three planeswalkers plus ghost fire plus Eye of Ugin equals mm -hmm. Eldrazi O'Clock baby. Hold on to there your butts. Is. They're about to either get mad or weird or dusty. Allegedly, this was all part of Bolas' master oh, yeah. plan with him so manipulating Chandra into seeking the <laughs> scroll and then hiring the consortium through a proxy to hunt her down, but it's never explained how this helps him in any way and, as we shall see, ends up forming the very organization that will one day defeat him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he just wanted to have a little fun. Nissa ends up rushing to the eye along with Sorin to try and undo the damage, but ends up deciding instead to totally free the Eldrazi, hoping that they'll yeah. just piss off into magic space or something after having been trapped for so long in her world's mountains. This totally doesn't work, although even if it had, she would have just doomed another world to being completely devoured by Abstract Galactus, and instead yeah. Ulamog the Destroyer, Emrakul the Corrupter, and Kozilek the one who traps you in your level's geometry, starts rampaging through and destroying Zendikar. Great job, Rip. Nissa. You smell. Gideon turns up, punches a few thousand monsters, and then starts traveling the multiverse, petitioning other planeswalkers to join the fight against the Eldrazi. Kind of like a Shen Yun world tour. Except Gideon isn't the uncritically accepted PR campaign of a literal cult who uses anti-communist sentiment to promote a religion whose spiritual leader claims to be a messiah sent to Earth to fight the aliens who allegedly introduced the evils of evolutionary thought, homosexuality, and race mixing to our planet. Look, I lived in London for like half a year. Seeing at least four of these posters on my way to and from work each day instilled a pressurized contempt in me that occasionally needs to be released or I'll suffer a hernia. Wait, what was I talking about? It's okay, Spice. I understand. <laughs> well, that was a thing. Oh yeah, cough. Koth is a oh. Volshock planeswalker Who? from Mirrodin who's following Gideon's lead and asking for help with his own problem, the re-emergence of Phyrexian creatures oh. and corruption in his homeworld. Nice a few lot. people, Esper and Venser, join Koth, and oh boy, do they find some shit when they arrive. People are getting oiled up left, right, and center. Glisser's now on Team Goo. Five new Phyrexian Praetors are winning out against the five respective areas of Mirrodin who are- Can I say that the Phyrexians, well, the updated ones anyway, have really cool designs? Is that a bad thing that I like the bad guys? Maybe. Maybe not. All too caught up in petty squabbles or in action far too long after the threat became apparent, and Khan is being worshipped as the new father of machines in Mirrodin's core. The plane You're is almost completely Messiah. lost to Phyrexia apart from a few minor wins. First, Venser gives up his spark to Khan, freeing him from the corruption and letting him escape from the plane, although dying in the process, and Koth remains to fight alongside the Mirren resistance, a ragtag group of people from all over the world who take their protracted Mirren's war quite literally underground. Amongst them as well is a lady called Melira, who seems to be uniquely immune to the effects of Phyrexis. The five Praetors, Urabrask, Jingataxis, Vorinclex, Sheldred, and most them. importantly, They're Elish so cool. Nord, are now in almost total control of Mirrodin and rename it New Phyrexia. Bloody colonizers. We poodle on over to Innistrad now where... Oh Christ, what's going on? The Archangel that Sauron created to protect the plane is nowhere to be found, allowing for devils, demons, and little steampunk freaks to run the show. Liliana shows up to locate another one of her four demon masters, Grizzlebrand, and is pursued by an increasingly moldy Garrick. She discovers that both the Archangel and Demon Master tripped over each other and fell into the Hell Vault, and goads the protector oh. of the prison, a lady called Thalia, into either destroying the rock or letting all of her men be slaughtered by Liliana's zombies. She relents and I breaks the Hellvolt, allowing for the return of Avacyn as well as many of Innistrad's oh. demons, one of which Liliana immediately kills. Sucks to be you, Grizzly. Nice. And whilst no one's paying attention, one extremely pissed off core climbs out and teleports away. But oh, we'll return is. to Innistrad later. What's been going on in Ravnica? Well, it's been a minute and Civil War has been delayed, but tensions are rising as Niv-Mizzet, one of the last remaining original parents of the guilds, has discovered the implicit 
Desert Maze, a scavenger quest left behind by Azor to be found and solved in case the original guild pact was ever broken, which would designate its solver as the new living guild pact of the world. Jace ends up solving living the puzzle guild whilst pack? dodging assassination attempts from the Gorgon Planeswalker of Raska by mind controlling all of the guild's champions during a final confrontation, which oh. technically meets the maze's secret victory condition of somebody actually getting all of the guilds to cooperate for five minutes and begrudgingly becomes the living guild pact of Ravnica, essentially the district attorney for the entire world. <laughs> but what happens to Elspeth, I hear you cry? Well, but what happened to Elspeth? Holy shit, Rowan, you're supposed to come in before the line. Jesus, how are you so bad at this? Well, she arrives back on Theros, hoping to find new meaning after what she feels is the final defeat at Phyrexia's hand that she can stand. Heliod notices her and the blade she's wielding and sets her on a quest to become his new champion, with sinister oh. intentions. At the oh. same time, the planeswalker Xenagos has grown bored of all the multiverse has to offer and decides to attain godhood on his home plane, manipulating the gods into warring with each other and using a great revel to ascend to Nyx. Elspeth, who accidentally killed a guy called Daxos, who she was man sweet for. I've written man, man sweet? sweet. I'm pretty sure I should have written mad sweet, but man sweet also does work. She kills him due to the fervor brought about by Xenagos' revel, and so follows the satyr into the realm of stars and defeats him, only to be slain by Heliod because, at the end of the day, all he really wanted was his sword back. Oh, and damn it, Heliod. Wait, who's that? And Dejani, one of Elspeth's best friends, is there and not super jazzed by this development. <laughs> also, a fish lady called Kiora shows up and nicks the sea god's trident and stories are written about how it was the funniest shit ever to go down. But what's going on <laughs> over on this plane? Fiora is a renaissance Venice looking land whose main seat of power, the high city of Paliano, is caught in a power struggle. The good king died but then came back as a ghostly despot and a bunch of different characters are all vying to take the throne. Let's check back in to see if any of them do so in a few years. For now though, no. it's... No. Tarkir time. Sauron arrives on Tarkir looking for Ugin because he should have shown up when the old Drazi got out of their prison, but all he finds are the bones of the long dead spirit dragon. Bones that Sarkin also shows up at thanks to a guided tour oh. from the leader of the Jeskai monks, Narset. Sarkin's now disillusioned Fight. with Nicol Bolas and hearing a new dragon's voice in his head, which he suspects is that of Ugin. Narset gets knackered by Zergo Helm Smasher, Sarkin's bitter old boss, but before the dragon man can do anything, he gets transported back in time. This is where he changes fate and saves Ugin's life after his battle with Bolas. You see, originally he wasn't supposed to be at their punch up and oh. Ugin was slain by Bolas, but now fate has been reforged and Sarkin puts Ugin in a magically induced coma to heal him up. When Sarkin comes back to the oh. new future, dragons have become the total rulers over Tarkir with the mortals of the plane subjugated. You see, Ugin's presence on the plane created dragon storms that disappeared when he died and allowed for the mortal clans to reclaim their plane from the invading dragons. However, in this new timeline, Ugin's millennia long coma intensifies these tempests, oh probably because this cocoon looks uncomfortable enough to produce magical night terrors and leads the dragons to winning a total victory over the clans. Planes hopping. Retconning, time travel. We've got it all, don't we? <laughs> Every single trick of the book here. What oh, I what is even going to happen next? Just as a sidebar, originally in the story, Ugin was a native to Tarkir and part of its very elemental soul, and so too, therefore, were the dragon storms, so the politics of subjugation and domination were a bit more complicated. Uh, but then he was retconned to be Bolas's twin brother, so now he's just a dominarian settler and the dragons are an intrusive occupying force. Well, there you go. Yeah, yet another retcon. <laughs> I, I guess the lore just kind of molds itself depending on where we want to take it at the moment in order to release more cards, maybe. It's a little unfortunate, but I, I, I get it. Of course. Anyway, in this future, all five of the clan's cultures have been destroyed or remade. Their civilizations now exclusively function in service of dragon kind. Any worship or even knowledge of their past reality is met with death via dragon breath. And this is a... Uh... Good thing? Mm, not sure about that. Good thing anyway, for Ugin wakes up in this timeline to go to stop the Eldrazi, and Narset's also alive and a planeswalker now, and she teleports away to, I don't know, find herself. 
Speaking of Zendikar, it's all hands to the pump as most of the plane has already been destroyed. Oh, An all-star team of good. planeswalkers including Gideon, Nyssa, Jace, Kiora briefly, and Ugin arrive to combat the monsters and destroy their material forms. Ugin warns that trapping them is better because the titans are just physical representations of the Eldrazi and imprisoning those avatars here protects the wider multiverse, but everybody simultaneously says, yeah, how well did that work out last time? And before Ugin can yeah. point out that both Nyssa and Jace are super to blame for shit going sideways in the first place, Operation Blow Up Cthulhu is enacted, with Chandra jumping in to deal with the final blow to Ulamog and Kozalek, saving the day and forming the Gatewatch, nice. a planeswalker strike team of multiversal protectors. Oh, there's I also the here. sickest scene in all of Magic's history, where the demon planeswalker Obnixilus takes on all of the Gatewatch at the same time in order to destroy a trap made to capture Ulamog and regain his own spark, and manages to almost defeat them, getting around Gideon's indestructible skin by holding his face in a puddle. I pressed it. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? His face down hard into the muddy water. He thrashed and flailed. He sputtered and coughed, struggling to get purchase. I could feel the despair and fear as his hand slipped in the mud. Invulnerability was no match for three inches of dirty water. <laughs> <laughs> Not entirely sure why the voice of Obnixilus in my head is that of a disgruntled southern dandy, but I'll be damned if I don't point out ice-cold lines when they appear. But wait, only two titans were destroyed. Where's Emrakul? Well, over to the greener pastures of Innistrad, where- <laughs> Fuck me, what now? Everyone's losing their minds for some reason, including oh. Avacyn and two of her sisters, forcing oh, Sorin to slay Avacyn. his archangel before she kills any more innocent people. Demons, zombies, and devils are making a big comeback, and a new cult worshipping a new symbol has cropped up. Jace arrives to investigate the ruckus and finds that Nahiri has been manipulating the population oh. and the very land itself to guide Emrakul to the plane, to do to Innistrad what she blames Sorin for bringing to Zendikar. She also kills most of Sorin's vampire family before trapping him in a wall like how he stuffed her in the Hell Vault, a funny prank in amidst a magical genocide. Avacyn's death breaks down the final barrier needed for Emrakul to arrive, and the Gatewatch gather to seal her away in the silver moon of the plane with Liliana and Tamio's help, the former of which begrudgingly agreeing to join the Gatewatch afterwards, and Innistrad is left with just one angel watching over it. Both Nyssa and Tamio report afterwards that they didn't act of their own volition, and Emrakul had manipulated them into sealing her away for some reason. However, this has never been addressed in the last eight years of Magic's narrative, so who knows if this interesting tidbit has any plot relevance. Gotcha. Speaking of plot relevance, how are things going on Fiora? Well, this ghost assassin called Kaya was hired to kill the king, very cool, but as a result, an infamous native assassin has taken over the city, less cool. Some riotous goblins, dispossessed naturalists, and ex-members of the guard are all jostling to lead a revolution against her. Which faction will take the crown? Who knows? Conspiracy 3 hasn't been released yet. Back to the actual story. The Gatewatch okay. then travels to Kaladesh after being hired by a planeswalker called Davin Barn, who wants them to run security for the Plains Inventors Fair. Chandra discovers that her mum is alive and still doing cool revolutionary stuff, but she, her mum, and Nyssa get captured by a severely burnt but still alive Baral and are to be executed in combat with the head judge of the fair who, surprise surprise, is Tezzeret. However, the sudden oh. appearance of the rest of the Gatewatch, oh, along with Vajani, who signed up to their mailing list a little bit earlier, causes Tezzeret to flee and he uses uses the confusion to decree the seizure of all the fair's inventions, causing the entire city of Girapur to be erupted in revolution! The renegade successfully defeats the consulate, but not before Tezzeret steals the most important invention, a planar bridge which can transport non-living material across planes by fusing it into his chest and planes oh. walking away. Is the that, Gatewatch follow Tezzeret and effects? end up on <laughs> Amonkhet, a world mostly populated by zombies Amonkhet. and sand, which is coarse and dry and gets everywhere. They make it to the plane's last remaining city, a gorgeous little slice of the world called Naktamun, where people from five different temples fight against each other this in deadly competitions for the cool. chance to pass from the city. I really like the, the Tomb Kings from Warhammer Fantasy, and I mean, I, I guess just the fantasy Egyptian aesthetic. There's something to be said about it. He threw the gates to the afterlife, where they are promised paradise. Chandra discovers a dissenter from this system, Samut, locked in a sarcophagus, and the Gatewatch disrupt one of these murder ceremonies just as the foretold arrival of the Second Sun begins the apocalyptic coming of hours. 
Turns out, though, that Armageddon both isn't spiritual and also sucks. Nicol Bolas has been turning the champions of the trials mm. into an army of ultimate warrior mineral zombies, and now he unleashes them upon what few people remain on Amonkhet. Turns out, when he killed everybody older than a baby on the plane many years ago, he also destroyed all life outside this one city and brainwashed the eight gods into believing that these trials had always been their world's way, so they'd feed him a never ending supply of elite warriors. Oh, and all of the Damn. worker mummies that maintain this utopia are actually the reanimated corpses of all of the adults that the oh, dragon killed no. when he first arrived on the world. Wait, did I say eight gods? What a twist. Yeah, five gods looked after the mortals, and then the last three Bolas kept back to destroy the other gods and the city once they'd both served their purpose. The Gatewatch try and defeat Bolas, but fail miserably, with Jace getting brain bazookaed so hard that he planes walks away, and what few normal Damn. survivors there are after the Hour of Devastation flee into the desert beyond the city. All of Bolas's murder machine gods attack the rest of the Pantheon, killing most of them. But the Red Jackal Hazaret's memory returns as she is saved by Samut, and when thanked by her god, the speedster becomes a planeswalker due to pure spiritual euphoria. Yeah, it turns out you don't have to experience nice. trauma to have your spark ignite. Go figure. Before they retreat, <laughs> however, Liliana finds and kills Razaketh, the penultimate demon her contract is connected to. The gang fucks off to Dominaria, where Nissa points out that Liliana has clearly been using the Gatewatch to go after the demons that hold her soul contract, as opposed to doing <laughs> anything else, and Liliana's like, that is a disgusting accusation with no well, basis yeah, in reality yeah. whatsoever. Mm, but since sure. we just happened to be on Dominaria, there is this guy called Belzenlock that I kind of need to find, and Nyssa leaves the Gatewatch. The rest stick around I because see. they hear tell of the legendary Blackblade, which could be used to slay Bolas and bump into a few old faces. Joyra and Squee, who aren't old faces because they're immortal oh. actually, Khan, who's busy searching for one of those thermonuclear serving Brian's plates to here, bring yeah. Phyrexia up with, Teferi, who gets brought out of his family man retirement when Joyra gives him a power stone that holds part of his lost spark, Jaya Ballard, who reveals herself and begins to train Chandra in more powerful forms of pyromancy, and Liliana's brother Josu, who's a lich controlled by the Bells and Lock owned Cabal. They all find the Black Blade, take a trip on the recovered weatherlight, almost get eaten by a handsome young man, defeat Belzenlock, and start working on their plan to take the fight to Bolas when he just turns up and says, You fool! God, Feral! Liliana's contract has a clause in the small print that upon the deaths of her four demon signatories, it defaults to me. I own her soul now! You oh. fucking idiots, you absolute rubes, and spirits her away. Damn. Then Jace turns up without a shirt on, everybody asks what he's been doing, and he says, Smash cut to Ixalan a few weeks ago. Jace lands there with amnesia again, and gets picked up by Vraska, who's now working for Bolas and runs a pirate ship. Girl boss alert! She's supposed <laughs> to locate the Immortal Sun, a fabled artifact which was the thing meant to imprison Bolas on this plane all those years ago, and which is also making it so that she and Jace can't planes walk away from this tropical paradise. Instead of killing oh, him, Vraska gotcha. pities the utterly memoryless Jace and takes him aboard her pirate ship. During their travels, so not only do they find now? the legendary golden city of Arasa, where the sun is located, but also find each other. Yeah, that's oh. right, the wizard cop and the gorgon pirate are falling in love. Then, thanks oh to a clonk on his noggin, Jace gets all of his memory back, even the stuff from his childhood that had been purged by Alahamret, and forgives Vraska for all of her misdeeds against him in the past. What? Vras so... <laughs> That feels a bit convenient. <laughs> just gives a good conk on his head, and then he's just, ah, there it is. Vraska <laughs> is also party to this surge in memory, becoming dismayed after seeing how heavily manipulative Liliana's relationship with Jace was. Fuck me, this story beat Whip's ass. A collectible card game's tie-in digital narrative has no right to be as nuanced and touching as this. Anyway, Jace wipes Vraska's mind with her consent so that she can work as a sleeper agent under Bolas for now, and Tezzeret collects the Immortal oh. Sun using the planar bridge in his body when Vraska gives him the coordinates to it. Watley is a native to the plane who planeswalks to Kaladesh after the sun is removed and Bunch starts to date an artificer planeswalker called Sahili there, and Azor tries to stop them all, pretty homophobic of you guy, but Jace wipes his mind and leaves him on the island that he himself arrived Rip. on. God, this guy loves fucking up Sphinx's minds. And the Sun Empire <laughs> of the island of Ixalan, now in control of the Golden City, ferment a desire to sunset invasion the Iberian vampires that had been trying to do a colonialism on them. Oh, my patron here tells me that the plural of Sphinx is Sphinges. I'll let Eminem That's know we found another word to rhyme with orange. Hope you're tired of the good stuff, because here we get into the era of magic storytelling that made me fall out of love with the... 
Work produced by the in-house story team with at least some degree of communication between them, R&D and marketing. For your own help, please don't read Nick Kalman's most infamous novella. It's just a bunch of literal non-shit. Damn. It's always tragic when this happens, but with, uh, oh, I, I guess a universe as expansive as this, we're gonna have some hits and misses. Look at Warhammer Fantasy's End Times. <laughs> that, uh, mm, that was not good, but it also was kind of inevitable. Lore, let's go! War of the Spar! Bolas's minions spring into action on Ravnica. Domri Raid, an ideologically incoherent runt, is boosted into leading the Grohl clans to sow distracting chaos on the plane. Vraska kills Isperia, the guildmaster of the Azorius, so that Dovin Barn, still bitter from the Gatewatch, doing pretty much the exact opposite of what he hired them to do, can surveil the entire city and install the Immortal Sun on the plane. Ral Zerak, a somewhat on-again, off-again accomplice, is Inception-style inspired to develop Project Lightning Bug, a means to call all of the multiverse's planes walkers to the city in case Bolas attacks it. Kaya, a similarly ah. non-committal minion, has taken over the Orzov Ghost Crime That'll Syndicate but ends up just killing point. the leadership and releasing the souls of their debtors into rest. Tezzeret sets up the Planar Bridge and Liliana is forced to use the Chain Veil to take control of Bolas's vast army of Eternals. The portal is opened slap bang in the middle of the city and the army begins to march through straight into Ravnica, slaughtering everybody in their path and Ral turns on his beacon, which is exactly what Bolas wants. He turns oh, on the Immortal course. Sun to prevent escape from the plane just as all the multiverse's planeswalkers begin to arrive and Bolas begins to suck their sparks from their body to fuel the Elder Spell, a ritual that will combine all of their sparks into his body and give him pre-mending levels of power to rule the multiverse. Domri Raid, along with absolutely loads of unnamed planeswalkers only introduced into the narrative to die in the background, get killed off, and the <laughs> gate That... that kinda sucks. <laughs> and just throw in a bunch of people here just to make it make sense. ...which have to mount a desperate last stand. It's all going terribly until it's not, and all of Bolas's minions are either killed, get unamnesiaed and fight him, or run away, and Bolas Why? is defeated by the Blackblade- Oh, wait, that didn't work. Wow, that shit's garbage. Uh, but oh. wait, Liliana is in control of the zombies, who are meant to be harvesting sparks, and even though she knows this will forfeit her life, she turns them and two of the resurrected gods of Amonkhet that Bolas eternalized as his personal bodyguards onto the dragon himself, oh, ripping nice. out his spark. Bolas tries to kill Liliana in response, but Gideon takes the burden of her contract onto himself, dying oh. and being reunited with his childhood friends, and saving Liliana and the multiverse in the process. Niv Mizzet, who died just before the invasion, is resurrected by the guild was after Jace one. resigns from his job, and the dragon becomes the new living guild pact and arbiter of law on the plane, assuring everyone he won't play favourites, especially not to the guild he's led for thousands of years that shares his name and branding, and Ugin spirits Bolas <laughs> away to his meditation realm and has held him prisoner ever since. Oh, and Dak Faden also dies. He has absolutely no impact on the Ooh. main narrative of Magic the Gathering, despite being one of the story's best characters, and it's a travesty that his introduction into the canon is when he gets killed off in the trailer for War of the Spark. May God have mercy <laughs> on Greg Weissman and Nick Kelman's souls. Next comes War of the Spark Forsaken, and until somebody beats me in an arm wrestle where the stakes are that if I lose I have to agree that the events of that awful garbage are canon, I simply refuse to acknowledge it as anything more than a hideously <laughs> overpriced piece Here of amateur fan fiction. Dovin Barn All wasn't right, killed off, see. Chandra didn't randomly decide she is and has always been straight, and Ajani didn't grin his what? Leonin grin. We're moving on. Palette cleanser time. Oh. Garrick is still cursed by the Chain Veil, okay. which Liliana has now disposed of in an attempt to hide from the many planeswalkers who are on Ravnica who just want to talk. The Beast Whisperer has been enthralled by the Fae trickster Oko into being a helpful dog servant. Oko is a quirky agent of chaos and almost sends the whole plane of Eldraine into war by turning its king into an elk. The king's children, Rowan and Will, oh. discover this and undo the curses both on their dad and on Garrick, only for Oko to get away and the horrible truth about the twins' birth is revealed. Turns out Ooh, their birth mother, I who see. they thought was a lady who died before they were born, was actually a witch who their father whilst he was on a quest, and he was oh. only saved when their heroic stepmother oh came my. looking for him. This traumatic revelation ignites both their sparks and they disappear, with Garrick promising their parents that he'll look after them and planes walking away as well. Ah, what a good surrogate uncle. This is the last time we will hear from Garrick for the rest of the video. Wow, what, what a deadbeat. Theros Beyond Death is the next set, and let's see what the official story says happened. Well, the book never oh came no. out, and this is what we got instead, a story summary that's 20 times shorter than this entire script that, at bare minimum, does make my job easier. 
Elspeth wakes up dead in Theros' underworld, being tormented by a nightmare planeswalker called Ashiok, who accidentally gives her a special weapon that she uses to escape and defeat Heliod, trapping him Tartarus style, oh, holding a finally. big ball in the underworld. Oh, and the guy she was in love with who she killed comes back as a demigod, and the god of fate oh. makes a champion to hunt Elspeth down, but he fails when she planeswalks away, so he simply planeswalks after her. Oh. Damn, they'll let anyone be a planeswalker okay. nowadays. Let's go to a new world. Ikoria, a land of big mutated monsters, small-minded humans, yeah. and Peter wizards, except with less of the widely reported instances of animal abuse. Vivian turns up pretty much just to hang out with some cool animals, and wait, wasn't she introduced with her whole character's purpose being the wielder of a weapon specifically designed to kill Nicol yes. Bolas? Where yes. was she in War of the Spark? Well, you see, Who Greg knows? Weissman was too busy working out a way to de-gay Chandra in his follow-up novel, and Wizards of the Coast were too preoccupied making their workers think up new products to release every other week to remember to coordinate consistent storytelling. She didn't do anything in that story, and she's the Pokemon Planeswalker now. Deal. Oh, that's... that's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> there are some similarities here that you can maybe draw to the end times or Warhammer Fantasy, where they just kind of forgot about the existence of certain characters. Just get rid of everything. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah. This is certainly one of them. Especially when you have a character as important as this, where you clearly state that this is a weapon that can literally kill the big bad but they're just not here because then it would kind of, you know, ruin the narrative. It's, uh, but she should have been there. They even had that device that would call all the planeswalkers to that plane, right? It doesn't make sense. Unless if I'm misunderstanding something, I don't think I am, though. With it. Anyway, Luca is a bonder, a human with an innate connection to the monsters of the world, and is exiled from his Cute. home city, which hates bonders. Just a big cat. He decides to use <laughs> Ikoria's monsters as a weapon to destroy all of human civilization on the plane, but he gets oh. stopped super easily by Vivian, and his planeswalker spark ignites because of it. Oh, and the big monster rock that he was using to control the beasts of the world, that was also kind of talking to him, blows up. That's all you need to know about Ikoria. Enough of the new, let's go back to the old. Zendikar has recovered amazingly quickly since the Eldrazi almost totally destroyed it. Uh, the wiki says that this takes place only a year after Oath of the Gatewatch, and there's almost no trace of the Eldrazi, materially or socially. Anyway, a Tears of the Kingdom situation is going down, with Nahiri searching for a core super weapon in the floating sky ruins of Zendikar to quell <laughs> the natural royal. Even if using yeah. it will kill loads of people on I the see. plane. You know, of course. because Nahiri suddenly doesn't care about the people of Zendikar. She was in the Hell Vault for too long, and now all of her favorite shops are gone, I guess, and she's decided <laughs> to make it everybody else's problem as well. Whereas Nyssa wants to use oh, the machine no, instead Nahiri. to heal the world of all the Eldrazi's remaining corruption, also quelling the Royal, itself an elemental response to the Eldrazi's presence. An obviously better option that achieves both of the Planeswalker's goals, but Nahiri fights against her anyway because Corporate has her picture on the side of the corkboard labeled Villains, so the story team have had to change the core's mentality from misled by revenge revenge to senselessly evil. Anywho, Nyssa wins, Nahiri is defeated, Dumb. and Zendikar is finally healed. Also, Jace is there, switching sides as if he isn't friends with Nyssa, and wasn't on the ground to see the last time that Nahiri had a say in how a plane should be treated. It can't be stressed enough how nothing in this set matters in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a Magic the Gathering fan, so I can only imagine how you guys would feel by learning about this story. Just characters doing things that are uncharacteristic of them because the plot demands it, or maybe the writers feel like it would just be more interesting that way. Just It sucks for anybody who's like super into the lore. Hal time, on the other hand, does matter. Finally, some good fucking food. Kaya is hired by a mysterious individual, it's Tesseret, to hunt a reported <laughs> monster on the plain of Kaldheim, a Norse myth-inspired world. There she Not discovers yet. two things. First, that the monster is one of the Phyrexian Praetor's Vorinclex, who absolutely oh. should not be anywhere but New Phyrexia, and whose presence here is beyond concerning, and that Tybalt, yeah. a devil planeswalker and trickster fuckboy, has been part hired, part coerced by Vorinclex into bringing about the Doomscar, the demon apocalypse of Kaldheim. 
The devil's plans are thwarted and he flees the plane, but not before Vorinclex uses the cataclysmic distraction to steal the sap of the world tree that connects all of Kaldheim's realms together. This is the one thing we didn't want to happen. Oh heavens, <laughs> look at the time. It's we need a magical school to visit o'clock. Strixhaven is a campus for mages on the plane of Arkavos that Will and Rowan are invited to by a mysterious planeswalker oh, yeah, called Casmina, who's the leader of an ancient and shadowy order of planeswalkers and people with planeswalker potential. If the Gatewatch is the Avengers, Kasmina's group are the Thunderbolts. The twins need to stop the Auric, a clan of magical college dropouts, from bringing back the Age of Blood and plunging the plane into the once unending war that they view as having spurred much of its magical innovation. Luckily, Luca is on the bad guy side for some reason, so the twins beat them easily, but not before a World of Warcraft Kool-Aid man rips Will's leg off. Liliana has oh. also been hiding out here after having Rip. given up the Chain Veil and is trying to turn over a new leaf and forgive herself. Oh, yeah, Liliana. I, I see it on the bottom of the card. I'm like, Professor Onyx? Oh, no. <laughs> when the Raven Man pops back up and starts tormenting Him? her again. Again? Well, now that the Eldrazi have been banished, Innistrad surely must be doing a lot better. Can you not handle it's your never, shit for two minutes? It's never going Jesus. good. Because Emrakul is in the moon, weird stuff to do with the day-night cycle has been going down, with the sun rising later and setting sooner. The werewolves started losing it as a result of being in wolf form far more often, and the humans of the plane have turned to a group of warlocks to bring the sun back. Arlen Cord, a werewolf planeswalker and leader of the smaller, hey, let's not kill the humans maybe, faction of the werewolves, asks the Gatewatch to help, and Teferi, Chandra and Kaya show up to find a key to turn the big make the sun come back machine back on. Unfortunately, Soren's rival, a vampire called Olivia Voldaren, nabs the key from them as a horde of werewolves disrupt the human festival aimed at stopping the final Yikes. sunset, and the entire plane is plunged into eternal night. Also, Soren managed to get out of the wall off screen before War of the Spark. Now he's oh. back, and broodier than ever. <laughs> then Olivia steals and reanimates Soren's granddad and marries him. The Gatewatch crashed oh, the what? wedding to free Sigarda, Innistrad's last guardian angel, kind of, another one showed up, it's not important, and beat Olivia, get the key back, and restart the sun. Teferi warns oh, Arlen okay. to be on the lookout for Phyrexians, and oh, what do you know? There one is. Junka Taxis is bumming about on Kamigawa with some custom trousers. Peep oh, the fit. The, Yet the another Phyrexian Praetor yeah. being off. <laughs> For whatever reason, I can only recognize the name of the Japanese plane, Kibigawa. <laughs> I guess I live up to uh, being a member of the legit weebs. <laughs> their home plane is very worrying indeed, and Kato returns. As it turns out, everybody's favorite the bastard boy. Tezzeret is the reason Gitaxis and the other Praetors are planeswalking, and he has of a course. bone to pick with old Tezzy boy, the person who Apple watched his childhood friend into yeah. the metaverse. Tamio turns up, tells Kato that the planeswalker known as the Wanderer is his old friend, and the pair help her return oh. to Kamigawa to fix her spark. Unfortunately, their plan is cut short as Tezzeret and Gitaxis ambush them, kidnap Tamio, and the Wanderer's spark pulls no. her into a new world. Kato follows after her, and Tamio becomes the first planeswalker to ever be completed by Phyrexia. Previously, planeswalker sparks had staved off the corruption of Phyresis, but Gitaxis's time on Kamigawa had revealed to him a way to oh, negate it. No. Ruh -ro, Raggy. The Phyrexian <laughs> threat is growing, and Elspeth travels back home to the city of New Capenna, a now 1920s-style hyper-romanticization of early 20th century worker exploitation, mob violence, and the lie of the American dream, to search for a means to defeat so Phyrexia. Many different styles. The plane had previously beaten back a Phyrexian invasion by using Halo, a substance derived from angels that acts not as a cure, but as a weaponizable immunizing substance against Phyresis. But someone else is looking for Halo. That's right, it's old reliable Tezzeret, and he's brought Urabrax, the heretic praetor who, what's this, is in almost open rebellion against the new Phyrexian cause and wishes to use Halo to tip the balance of power in the rest of the multiverse's favor? Tezzeret, you oh. old dog, you're doing a double cross. How quaint. Yeah. Could have done that before you kidnapped a lady who ran a storytelling orphanage and subjected her to a surgically experimental yeah. unlife, but better late than never. Elspeth finds the source of all of Capenna's halo, which is a single young, seemingly mortal angel, the last one on the plane, called Gaida, who sacrifices herself to save Elspeth from the clutches of Obnixilus, who has supplanted the head of one of the city's demon-run crime families. Her sacrifice also sends a pulse throughout the world, returning the rest of the plane's angels, trapped as they were in the city's many statues by the demons who once fought alongside and ultimately betrayed them during the Phyrexian invasion, to the waking world. Like gotcha. preview season, the train never stops, and we're back on Dominic 
area where Phyrexia is invading yet again. Khan oh, has found no. a Silex that he plans to use to destroy his enemies, but oh no, Sheldred is back and longer than ever, and Ajani throws Jaya off a mech on a mountain because it turns out he too has been completed and is under Elish Norn's direct thrall. Khan oh. is recaptured but is now immune to Phyrexia's corruption, so instead he's disassembled and his Silex is scrapped for two colourless mana. Whilst all of this is going on, Liliana finds out that the Raven Man who's been tormenting her all of her life is actually the spirit of the necromancer Lim Duel. <gasps> yeah, I knew that mentioning him way back in the Ice Age that plot would be relevant. That guy from the very beginning? Kind of. Now lacking a Silex, Teferi sends his soul back in time to the age of the Brothers' War, not to interfere, even if his time ghost does interfere just a little bit, but to work out how to recreate and then use the Silex, because the Gatewatch had kind of been winging it up until this point. The Artificer Planeswalker Sihili manages to recreate a filigree copy of the Silex from Teferi's instructions, but he gets caught in a time fracture and ends up trapped and phased out on Zalfir. Oh, hey, he at least again. he got to see it again. With that, now it's time <laughs> to take the fight to Phyrexia and look how they massacred my boy! No! Alright, Phyrexia, you went too far this time! A strike team of Els- Wasn't Slover the... Jesus, basically, did he sacrifice himself in order to restore everything? God damn it. Beth, Jace, Vraska, Nissa, Nahiri, Kato, the Wanderer, Kaya, and Tyvar Kel, an elf from Kaldheim, all join forces to take out Phyrexian leadership and decimate Sahili Silex in the core of the world. Unfortunately, Luca also decided to tag along, so God the plan it. goes horribly. Half of them get completed, and Elspeth has to what? eat the Silex as Jay sets it off, because Elish Norn grew a Phyrexian version of Kaldheim's world tree that's connected it to the rest of the multiverse, and if this plane is destroyed, all other realities may be blown oh up too. My God. Hey, at least a corrupted Tybalt gets killed. Fuck that guy. Also, we find <laughs> out the entire reason that Tezzeret has been working with the Phyrexians is so that they'd replace his strong Ethereum metal body with indestructible dark steel, and the reason that he was also working against them was because he wanted to enjoy his new body in a multiverse without Phyrexian control, essentially selling out the entire what? known multiverse for some new rims. What is wrong with you? <laughs> we already got the guy from the beginning. Oh god, I, oh, I forgot his name already. I don't want to remember his name. What a stupid idiot. But now you're going down this path too. Oh well. Let me just it is what it is, I guess. Speaking of those other realities, it's time for them to get got. Norn sends the corrupted angel Atraxa to New Capenna to stop the once defiant plane from being a threat. She then has Ajani execute Sheldred to consolidate more power in her hands, and sends him to corrupt the plane of Theros, where, whether he's aware or not, the Leonin repays Heliod's betrayal of Elspeth by turning all of his believers, and then him as a result, into Phyrexian monsters. Oh, no. The completed Frasco goes to Ravnica, Tamiyo attacks Kamigawa, Nahiri no. goes to Zendikar, Jace. Uh, wanders off, and the entire Phyrexian oh, war okay. effort spreads across every conceivable plane of reality. Unfortunately for them, however, Luca is now on their side, so they're beaten so quickly and easily that the entire invasion. <laughs> I don't think Spice likes Luca very much, or maybe just the Magic the Gathering community in general doesn't like Luca. <laughs> Probably doesn't do anything good for anyone on any side. <laughs> but wait. That's finally the weapon, the weapon that's supposed to kill the big bad. Doesn't even last one set. All of the Phyrexian invasions ultimately fail. Well, not quite. Oh. They pull a War of the oh. Spark, where planes we've never seen before are brought into the story only to act as off-screen casualties to imply a greater threat than is actually occurring in the narrative. Are you Every kidding me? No, why? Oh... There's no, like, easier way to destroy or remove any sort of stakes from a, a huge event. <laughs> Than to introduce things like introduce extras to see them die off. Like who cares? The audience doesn't care. Where that matters, however, does beat Phyrexia whilst mysterious shadows seem to watch events from afar. But how do they win? Shadows. First, Phyrexia's Worldbreaker tree is commandeered by the Dryad Planeswalker Wren, thanks to a final assault from both the Mirren Resistance and Urabrask's fifth column, and she uses the branches of the tree to reach out to Teferi, finally reconnecting Zalfir with the rest of the multiverse, and the whole plane portals their way into the heart of New Phyrexia. Angels run Halo from New gotcha. Capenna, whose citizens dropped a city block on Atraxa's head to kill her, to the rest of the multiverse via Worldbreaker, and the invaded realms immediately begin pushing back against the invaders. At some Very point nice. in all of this, Ourobrast's forces are captured, and the poor guy gets dismantled. 
Ren isn't done, however, and rather than just connecting Zalfia and New Phyrexia, she instead begins to swap their positions in the multiverse, which will lead to the latter phasing out of existence. Elspeth also turns up because her story was not yet done or something, and she's an angel now and beats Elishnorn up real bad. Khan also reassembles his broken body and deals the killing blow to the now defeated Mother of Machines, which causes... God, this sucks. Which causes anyone and everyone across the multiverse affected by the Phyrexian oil to shut down. Norn Aww. apparently reprogrammed all of the Phyrexian oil to be centrally controlled by Phyrexia or something like that. And so when she died and the plane phased out, it, I don't know, forgot how to oil? To be clear, I'm not mad Damn. at the writers for ending 30 years of storytelling with an Independence Day plot contrivance, <laughs> even though the entire point of Phyrexian Oil is that so long as one drop exists, Phyrexia exists. I'm mad that yeah. the company that makes the game, and most likely more importantly the company that owns them, deciding that a never-ending cycle of new products and lowest common denominator brand tie-ins are more important things to pursue Eleven. over maintaining a once-rich legacy of brilliant storytelling in a unique world. Invasion oh, Block was a three-set epic that lasted nearly an entire year of magic and told the story of Phyrexia invading a single plane. In contrast, the time between Phyrexia launching their multiversal invasion at the very end of All Will Be One to them being completely wiped out from existence at the end of March of the Machine was two months. We have spent more time and cardstock exploring D&D's forgotten realms than we have in the midst of what ought to have been the single most important and game-changing event in magic narrative since the original defeat of Phyrexia in Apocalypse. Good grief. Mm. Anywho, a gravely injured Malira gives up her life and Khan gives up his spark, both their respective tasks in life complete with the destruction okay. of Phyrexia, to heal and uncomplete Nissa and Ajani. But then Nahiri wakes up on Zendikar, also oh. uncompleted, so... Sorry, Malira, you died for nothing. Turns out getting Damn. exploded with Halo and losing your spark is enough to reverse the effects of Phyrexian oil. Maybe. Wait, she lost her spark? Well, the many portals snapping into and out of existence throughout the multiverse has also messed up the sparks of many planeswalkers, causing characters like Nyssa and Nahiri, but also Obnixilus, Kiora, Kalix, Tyvar, and some other chuckle fucks to all lose their spark <laughs> and planeswalker status. In the aftermath of the war, Jason and Vraska are AWOL, and a bunch of the planes are having to readjust themselves, like Eldrain, where a sleeping spell aimed at subduing the invaders has persisted and is causing problems throughout the land. Oh, Teferi rip. plants a single seed, which is all that remains of Ren, who burnt up in the World Breaker into the soil of Zalfir, and the whole invasion has left Omen Pass throughout the multiverse, meaning that non-planeswalker interplanar travel might be an option going forward, and Chandra finally kisses Nyssa, happy pride, see, I told you for Saken wasn't canon, and that's where we're at. What lies next for Magic Story? How will the aftermath of such an event shake out? Who will be the next grand menace of Magic's narrative? Will Tezzeret follow in Bolas's footsteps? Will the Eldrazi return? Will Lim Dull's machinations expand? Will Nahiri's hatred of Planeswalkers oh, turn into something which threatens the multiverse? Will the cult that Kasmin is in charge of do something? Who were those Watchers during the March of the Machine? Yeah, right. Whatever happens, I can't wait to get my hope up that the writers will be given time and space to produce interesting work, only to yet again so be disappointed by the breakneck speed at which the company insists that a quantity of cardboard is better than a quality and richness of lore. The amount of lore behind Magic the Gathering is insane. I would say that I really enjoyed, I, I guess, like the beginning to middle part of the lore, especially <laughs> <laughs> with freaking Urza over here just messing everything up. Like, yeah, his character is just... Uh, I I just hate him. <laughs> but there are interesting stories that kind of spawn from that, even if there was that weird retcon of them just being like, oh, we're just going to rewrite the ending so that things can continue to go on. Then I think they were called the Eldari or whatever. They got released and it was just, it was a whole lot of things going on, which are really cool. But then near the end here, yeah, oh, you can see a very clear decline in, in quality of the story with a lot of just convenient plot devices being put in in order to justify, uh, I guess, more story or particular political things that they want to throw in or, you know, just just to sell more cards. That's that's unfortunate. I guess this is just how these kind of things go. And as a fan, you can decide what lore you feel like is canon. Like how Spice here was like, yeah, no, that uh, that particular book was a uh, 
was not good. So let's just not consider it. And I mean, like, even in the lore later on, they didn't even bring that up. So eh. this was my first time ever doing really anything related to Magic the Gathering. So if you want to see more, let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I wish you all a wonderful rest of your day.